When it comes to online privacy, there is no skipping the password manager conversation. I've used a ton of them over the years. Some impressed me and some not so much. So today, I'm ranking the most talked about password managers into a tier list based purely on how much value they actually offer. Now, I have not been sponsored by any of these companies, so I'm not going to include any links to the products. And of course, you can expect no brand favors. This is just my honest take grounded in real world use and expert level privacy knowledge. My S tier peaks will be rock solid, but even the A tier ones will be worth your attention. So let's get straight into it. We are starting first with LastPass, and yes, we have to talk about this one. Technically, it checks the encryption box with AES-256, but its KDF settings have been historically weak. You know, low iteration counts and users typically we are not told. But worse still is that it's been breached multiple times, including this massive one where encrypted votes were stolen. And despite being one of the biggest names, it's closed source with no real transparency. Even though it offers 2FA support, the trust here is simply gone. As far as I'm concerned, this one is one to avoid. It's a DTS security nightmare, so tread carefully. Next is Passbolt. This one is built for themes and developers. It's open source, it uses GPG encryption under the hood, and you can self-host it for total control. That alone makes it stand out. It uses a zero-knowledge architecture and has been through independent audits. However, it's not really built for casual individual users. There is a learning curve and mobile support is still improving. But if you're running a privacy-first dev team, then this is good. It's A tier for me. Okay, let's go to a more popular one, Bitwarden. This one hits nearly every checkbox a privacy-conscious user would ask. So you get AES-256 encryption with PBKDF2, open source from top to bottom and independently audited multiple times by Q53. It also has a perfect breach-free record. It offers self-hosting if you want full control, or you can use their cloud with optional hardware key to FA. Honestly, this one is one of the few tools that nails transparency and usability in equal measure. The only fault I guess it has is its UI. It's a bit plain, but I'll choose function over flash any day, and this one is definitely an S tier option for me. Now, before we move on, a quick note on something that pairs perfectly with secure passwords, protecting your online identity. So if you're managing multiple accounts, scraping data, or trying to access geo-blocked content, maybe you could forget VPNs. What you actually need is a solid proxy solution. And so today I come bearing gifts. What I offer today is floppy data. It gives you access to millions of global IPs, residential, mobile, and data center, so you can stay on traceable. If you need rotating or you need static, it's purely your call. And great team management is built into floppy data. It also comes with a fair pricing plan that starts at just 90 cents per gigabyte with 30% off if you use my promo code FLYT30. I highly recommend Floppy Data. It's affordable, fast, and a reliable proxy solution for all your needs. It's great for web scraping, automation, or just secure browsing. And now, let's get back to the video. The next password manager we are looking at is Aura. This one is more of an identity protection package and the password manager is just one piece. It uses AES-256 encryption and 2FA is available. But then, there is no offline capability, it's not open source so you don't get that transparency and no notable audit history. It's a jack of all trades kind of solution, which means the password manager itself is mid-tier at best. It's a great option if you want a full identity package, but it's weak if you're just after a security vault. So I'll drop this one in the C tier. Now let's head over to one password. It nails encryption with AES-256 and PBKDF2 with high iteration counts. It's solid. However, it's not open source, but it's had multiple third party audits and a strong track record with no major breaches. At this level of popularity, that might be rare. However, the downside is that it doesn't have an offline mode, so you're tied to their cloud. But with support for hardware 2FK like YubiKey and an easy to use interface, it's a strong pick for most users who don't mind the subscription. So I'm calling it an A tier. This one could be Iron Lock. 
Roboform is a veteran that has refused to retire. It uses AES-256 and supports 2FA, but its closed source hasn't had any serious audits recently and lacks the transparency that modern users require. Now, offline mode is possible and this ends it some respect, but the interface feels old school and clunky. I'll say it's good enough for basic use, but it's not keeping up with today's best. You wouldn't hand your house keys to a rusty lock, right? So I'll drop this one in the BTA. here. Now, sticky password has been around forever and it does offer something rare, an offline mode. So you can use this one entirely without syncing to the cloud, which ends points in the privacy department. Encryption wise, it uses AES 256 with a decent KDF and 2FA is available, though it's pretty basic. But its closed source hasn't had a modern security audit in ages and the UI feels, well, dated. It's not terrible, but this one hasn't really evolved and that's a problem for me, so I'm going to drop it in the BT. Okay, let's move over to Proton Pass and this one is exciting. It's built by the same team behind Proton Mail and Proton VPN, so people who live and breathe privacy. This one uses modern encryption, so XCHACHA20. It has zero knowledge architecture and is fully open source. Plus the code for this one has already gone through audits. But it's still evolving. Features like TOTP and advanced autofill have been polished. But the foundation is rock solid. So if you care about privacy and transparency, Proton Pass is one to watch. I guess it's just short of S tier. This one is definitely an A tier password manager. Now let's go over to log me once. This one markets itself as feature packed and yeah, it is, but maybe just too much. It uses AES-256 and supports 2FA, including biometric and photo login gimmicks. But the real red flags for me are that its closed source has no independent audit history and the interface is chaotic. In some ways, it might feel more like a kitchen sink than an actual password manager. Privacy-wise, there's a lot of marketing fluff and not enough transparency, so I'll be dropping this one in the CTA. Now, NodePass talks a big game with XCHACHA20 encryption. That's modern and future-proof and a nice change from the usual AES-256. It's also zero-knowledge by design and offers multi-factor authentication, including biometric login. NodePass underwent a comprehensive security audit in February 2020 by the security firm Kio53, which found some low-level vulnerabilities, but these were subsequently patched. But here's the catch, it's also closed source, so you're basically trusting Nod's reputation and marketing. It's not the worst, but not for the ultra-cautious either. So this one lands solidly in the eight year. Okay, we move to KeyPass, the OG of offline password management. This one is fully open source, no cloud involved, and ridiculously extensible. For encryption, you get AES 256s with SHA 256s and Argon 2 or custom KDFs. If you need 2FA, add a plugin, and there's also a plugin to auto sync to your own server. The trade off here is usability. It's not pretty and it's not beginner friendly, but for power users, it's packed with flexibility and control. This is another STA for me. We head over to SecureSafe. This is one that comes out of Switzerland and leans heavily on that Swiss privacy angle. You get AES-256 encryption, strong KDFs and 2FA supports, but it's close source and there is very little technical transparency. This simply means you have to take their word for it. Also, features like autofill and browser extensions are clunky. It's great for storing sensitive files, less so for everyday password management. It's a C tier option. Now, Dashlane is one I've seen everywhere. It almost seems to be doing a sponsorship with every YouTuber I know. Dashlane used to offer a local vault, but now it's fully cloud only. And that's a step backward for privacy. It still uses AES-256 encryption and it has had independent audits. But it's close source, so you're trusting the audit summaries. This one does offer a slick UI and extras like dark web monitoring and support strong 2FA. But for power users or privacy purists, it's more convenience than control. It's great for beginners, but not a hardcore privacy tool. It's a BTA option for me. Now we head over to passwording, which is one from the team behind Key Solid VPN. 
But for me, this already raises a red flag because VPN first companies tracking on a password manager don't always nail the fundamentals. It uses AES-256, supports 2FA and has a zero knowledge design, but there's no audit history, it's closed source and offline mode is non-existent. It's more of a convenience product than a privacy fortress. It's adequate, but not elite. And this one goes in the C tier for me. Next, we have EndPass, and I believe this one is underrated. It's fully offline by default, no cloud dependencies, unless you choose to sync via your own provider. AES-256 encryption with PBK DF2 keeps your vault safe, and everything is stored locally unless you see otherwise. It's not open source, but the company has been transparent about architecture and has decent 2FA support. In the 2023 Kio53 audit, a high-risk vulnerability was discovered, but this has been fixed. If you want a privacy-first experience without subscriptions, it is a solid middle ground option. Ideally, this one would be between the B tier and A tier, but let's give it an A. Now, Total Password is a new command on the block and it shows. AES-256 is in place and it offers basic 2FA, but there's no audit history and it's completely closed source. No local storage, no offline option, you're all in on the cloud. For a privacy-focused tool, that's already two strikes. It feels more like a rebranded white label product than a serious contender. I'll place this one just above LastPass and give it a C rating. Now, KeePass XC is a fork of KeePass. This one is a privacy nerd's dream. Fully open source, works completely offline and stores everything locally. No cloud. You get AES-256 with SHA-256 and Argon-2 for rock solid encryption. No company is holding your keys, no blind faith needed. The trade-offs actually is that it's more manual, no autofill magic or sync unless you set it up yourself. But if you care about control and transparency above all else, this one is elite. It's an STA and I'll recommend it. Next is Zoho Vault. It's aimed at businesses, but individuals can use it too. Encryption is handled well. You get AS-256 with PBKDF2 and it's been audited. There's also offline access through mobile apps and Zoho has a good security reputation overall. But it's closed source and the UI isn't the most intuitive. Still, if you're already in the Zoho ecosystem, it's an okay value pick. Maybe this one falls shy of A tier and I'll drop it in the B tier. If you've enjoyed this rundown so far, please remember to smash the like button and share the video as well. Now we move ahead to Bitdefender. This one is known for its antivirus, but not really as a password manager. It offers AES-256 encryption, cloud syncing, and basic 2FA. But here again, there is no offline mode, no real transparency, and no independent audits to back its security claims. It's closed source and kind of feels like a bundled extra rather than a fully mature product. If you already use Bitdefender, then it's fine, but it's not top tier on its own, so I'll be dropping this one in the B tier. And lastly, we head over to one that I like, Keeper. It plays both sides, cloud-based, but with an optional offline mode for enterprise. Encryption is strong, AS-256 with PBKDF2, and it supports advanced 2FA, including biometrics and hardware tokens. It's closed source, but it has gone through multiple third-party audits. Still, pricing is on the high side, and the UX can feel bloated with upsells. It's secure, no doubt, but it feels more business first than user first. It's A tier for me. And that's it for this rundown. I've given you my honest take on all these products. This take has been by my own experience or experience of colleagues who have used them. If you like this kind of videos, please remember to smash the like button. And of course, share this video and subscribe if this is your first time watching our channel. And that is as far as we go on this video. Till the next one, please stay safe out there.